Hi, welcome to learnhowtogarden.com and in today's episode of the 10 Minute Gardener we're going to be dealing with one of the most difficult situations to produce vegetables or fruit from and that's a north wall. And on that north wall we're going to be planting a Morello cherry which is a chef's delight. If you're not already subscribed to us at Learn How to Garden, there is a link below this film that will take you over to the website, input your email address, and it means every time I put a new film up I can let you know, and it also means you get access to our monthly newsletter. Behind me is a eucalyptus I sowed, oh gosh, I sowed the seeds about 15 years ago. They grow quite quick, these beauties. But as you can see, even in the spring sunshine, there's lots of sun on it. But if we pan around past the camellia, this, is a north wall. It's just outside my kitchen. Uh, it's one side of my little potager where I grow most of my salad. And if I just walk over here, you can see even at the height of the sun, it's dark. So the only real fruit that will grow successfully on this wall is a Morello cherry. And what we have here is a pot grown, fan trained Morello cherry. When this cherry arrives with you, you can plant it at any time of the year because it's been grown in a pot. But the first thing you'll notice, it'll arrive on a frame, but the frame is on this cherry quite square, but the branches are coming off at a fan. And to grow this successfully against the wall, we need to put a frame against the wall. So the first thing you need to do is get some wires across your wall. And unlike with an espalier, it doesn't matter where these wires are, because once the wires are there, you then put your frame work that you're going to grow the actual fan along onto those wires. So the wires support the framework, and then the branches are connected to the fan. And when you put your wires up, and someone asked me this on one of the previous um, fruit growing videos, these turnbuckles, open them out as far as you can, put the wire on and tension it, and then as you turn this buckle, that's what puts the tension into the wire. And it doesn't have to be rigid, but you want enough tension so that the actual supports aren't going to blow around. And what I've done here is use these vine eyes that are about six inches um, long, so that we're holding the cherry off the wall and that will allow us to plant the tree about a foot away from the wall so it's not in the bone dry soil at the bottom of the wall. The first thing we need to do is take this frame off the actual cherry and dig a hole to prep it. Now dig a hole to prep it, dig a hole to plant it. We've already prepped this by double digging the area all the way along the wall and incorporating a really well rotted manure uh, or you could use garden compost. <coughs> the only two things we're going to do now is we've got some ash out of my wood burner which has quite a lot of potash and we'll be using uh, some blood fish and bone and some mycorrhizal fungi. So the first thing I'll do is take this frame off and get the hole dug. Once we've got the frame off the cherry you can actually start to see the fan shape. Some people seem to think that it's a bit like your hand and it comes from one place but the branches fan out coming up along the main stem. The hole has been dug so that when the actual tree is planted the finished soil level will be exactly the same as it was in the nursery. So I would then take my mycorrhizal fungi, add some to the soil that's going to go back in and then pop some into the base of the hole. I was asked why I don't throw it all over the roots. Well, this isn't a bare-rooted tree. You can do that with bare-rooted trees, but I still prefer to have it mixed in with the soil so that there's a much larger area covered by the actual fungi. If you wonder what mycorrhizal fungi is, we did do a separate film on it. Very healthy looking root system. There's really no need to tease these roots out. It's not pot bound at all uh, and it will quite happily come out of there. And then placing it so it's about, as I say, a foot away from the wall. We now backfill using the soil, using the heel of your boot 
to firm round it, but don't push down on the root ball that's just come out of the pot. You're not trying to crush the roots, you're just trying to remove air spaces or big air spaces from the soil around the root ball. And remember that because it's fan trained, it's two dimensional. The tree is going to grow across the wall, not into it and out from it. And it's the training of the fruit that will actually keep it in those two dimensions. Once it's firmly in the ground, you now need the support. Please excuse the yowling if you can hear it. I'm not sure you can. It's my ancient Siamese who is on the conservatory roof behind us in the spring sunshine being very disgruntled that uh, I'm out here doing this rather than doing what of course my major job is in the world for an elderly Siamese which is supplying food, sustenance and generally rubbing her tummy. We want something to hold these branches. So we're going to tie or we're going to secure some bamboo to the wires. And I'm going to use black bamboo, not for any sort of um, design statement. It'll just be easier for you to see where the bamboo goes. I've now got my bamboo supports in and if you look they're actually at a much lower angle than these branches are growing. That's because these branches are last year's growth and they can be bent down to meet the actual frame and that will mean I can spread the tree across the wall. If you wonder what these two are doing here, well obviously this one is for this branch and the one here is to take the branch that will come out of this little bud here. If you want to get um, a branch in a specific place, one of the things you can do with fruit trees sometimes, if a bud is very um, shy to sort of break, is if you just put a tiny little nick above it, that sometimes encourages a sort of branch to go where you want. All that's left to do now is I'm going to mulch around the base of here with well-rotted garden compost. I'll water it in and then I'm actually going to tie these branches in. Now the branches are going to swell, they're going to grow, that's the whole point of them. So if you tied it with string or just normal wire you do risk the chance of biting into the bark and once you've bitten through the bark that's it, you know, you, the actual all the uh, goodness flows through that bark. So we use this which is a rubber coated wire which means there is, one, it's very easy to tie things in, two, there's an allowance built into it for the actual tree growing. And I always find that the easiest way to use it is take a piece, literally wrap it, let's go here, might be easier, round, back, there's your branch, and twist. You're not trying to tie it to this thing, the um, support. You're just trying to hold it there while it grows and stiffens into the correct place. So all we need to do now is tie these on, mulch around here, and we'll wrap up. With this Morello, if you pick them when they're red, it's great for stewing. If you leave them till they're nearly black, they're when they're the best sauce, I think, to go with duck. It's not a sort of forget about now for the summer. <coughs> because it's close to a wall, if you get a dry spell, certainly for the first couple of years, well worth watering. And also these ties need checking. As these lateral branches grow, you need to tie them in throughout the summer. Another little trick you can use, if any of these buds are totally in the wrong direction, facing straight back or straight out, you could prune them off, but if you get them young enough, just rub them. The old sort of uh, man who worked in the apple orchards in Herefordshire never used to use secateurs. They'd go around uh, at bud burst and literally just rub with their fingers. They were that good at it, much quicker, much easier. Um, <coughs> keep it weed free and it should repay you with a beautiful harvest from a freezing cold north wall where very little else 
will grow. Thanks a lot for watching and I hope you enjoy growing your fan, fan trained cherries.